Now typically in an application that uses Hibernate, what we want to do is we want to have a session factory that we can access from anywhere because we need to get our sessions from our session factory. Remember that we're going to do everything that we do in Hibernate through the use of our session and we'll be creating a transaction in that session. But in order to do that, it makes sense usually to go ahead and create a singleton that has the session factory or an instance of it that we can get from anywhere in the application. So we're going to go ahead and do that next. Now before we do that, let's go ahead and fix this so that we have a namespace so we're not using the default. I'm just going to create a namespace called com.simpleprogrammer. And I'm going to move our program under there. Next, let's go ahead and create a new class and I'm just going to call this Hibernate Utilities. We're going to put our utilities inside of here that we need to access from anywhere. And inside this class, what we're going to do is we're basically going to create our session factory and make it accessible. So let's do a private static session factory and we'll call this session factory. And I hit control shift O there to do that auto import if you're not familiar with Eclipse. And then we need to have a service registry. And if you have worked with Hibernate before and you haven't worked with the newer version 4.0, you'll probably not be familiar with service registry. Service registry is something new that's been added and it's really not going to affect us much. It's basically just adding another layer of abstraction here to enable Hibernate 4.0 to work slightly differently, but for everything that we're doing, it's not going to matter because in the end, all we're trying to do is get a session factory. So we're going to pretty much ignore the difference there. And you'll see how we do this slightly differently than an initialization that you might be used to for Hibernate. So we're going to create a static block and we're going to put a try block in here. And the first thing we need to do is get our configuration. So let's create a configuration. And we're going to set this equal to new configuration. And we'll go ahead and import this. We want to use the Hibernate configuration. And then we need to actually call configure on this. And what will happen is when we create this configuration and we call configure, it's going to automatically find this hibernate.cfg.xml file. It's going to use the configuration that we specified in there so it will know where the JDBC driver is, the dialect to speak, all of that information. So once we have our configuration, we need to get our service registry. And we get this by doing service registry equals new we're going to use a service registry builder and we're going to call on this apply settings plural and here we need to pass in configuration dot get properties this is going to be the properties for our configuration and that is basically going to allow us to configure this service registry and then once we have our builder we want to actually build this so we're going to say build service registry all this does is get us our service registry. Again, it's not important to understand exactly what this does, but we need a service registry in Hibernate 4 in order to get our session factory, which is what we're really after. So now that we have that, let's set our session factory equal to configuration dot build session factory. And we're going to use this one that takes a service registry. Now we have our session factory. We're going to put a catch block here just in case we have a problem. And we're going to catch hibernate exception. We'll call this exception. And if we have a problem, let's just do a system.out.print line problem creating session factory. Just so we know if there's an issue and we don't try to go on past this. Then the next thing that we want to do is we want to just create a public static method called get session factory. It'll return us our session factory and we'll just make this return that instance we have. So we're just going to say return session factory. And that's it. Now we can use this to get our session factory. Quite a bit of code here just to get started a lot of setup for hibernate but once you get this set up then you'll be good to go you just have to walk through these steps and get everything set up unfortunately there's not just an easy way to turn on hibernate and get going 